Good morning and welcome to Entertainment Review here on Studio City TV. My name is Babo and I'm going to be bringing you the latest updates from the world of, of entertainment. All the Jews, the spies, the little, little details in the world of entertainment that you missed or you just didn't know. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel, follow us on all our social media platforms and with that being said, let's get into the video. So American rapper Mick Mill has received a backlash over his latest freestyle music video that he did at the Jubilee House. So Mick Mill came in Ghana a few days before the Afro Nation Festival, which was during the latter part of 2022. So when he arrived in Ghana, he was seen with the DC bikers, he went clubbing, he, he was actually received well in Ghana. And then we had a lot of people who welcomed him. And he even tweeted on his pages how he felt like Ghana was a second home to him. But then after, before he left, he was seen at the Jubilee House in what was believed to be a diaspora event or a diaspora meeting. He was just, it was just to draw people who were abroad and had other African ties closer to the country. So he was taken around the Jubilee House. It was a tour. He was taken around the Jubilee House. He posted a video where he spoke about his life in prison, how it felt for him, how his music life had always been, and how it's now moving. So after he posted that video, he also posted a picture that featured him and the members of his team posing alongside the president of Ghana. So one of his team members actually had his hand over the shoulder of the president. And then all of them that were at that particular place at that particular time were not dressed appropriately for the Jubilee House. So in Ghana, there are certain places or certain, yeah, there are certain places that we don't just enter in casual outfits. So for instance, you can't enter the court of law with a, with a casual outfit. You have to be dressed formally. And then if you are dressed in any kind of outfit that is not formal, sometimes you are actually asked to go back and go and wear something appropriate. So Ghanaians actually were not happy when McMill posted a picture and he was in shorts and he was taking a picture with the president. So, and, and it turns out that that wasn't the only thing that was wrong with that particular picture. Mikimo was in short. None of the team members had ad actually dressed formally. They were all in casual fits. And then one of them had his hand over the shoulders of the president. There was no bodyguard or anyone like that in the picture. There was no one who told him to take his hand off the president's shoulders. And then it also, raised, it also raises the question, who took that particular picture? Because we can't say that the president was unguarded at that moment. So he definitely had his bodyguards around, or he had someone who was seen to his security or his protection. And then the person didn't make any move to take the hands of the team member of Mikimo off the president's shoulder. And then following that, we thought that was it. After people had bashed him, everyone had spoken what they had to say, we thought that was it. So McMill came to post this video. And then we, we still don't get it. How did he get that, that permission to do such a thing at that place? Even if it's not something that he had written officially that he wanted to do, you cannot say that there are no security personnel at the Jubilee House. So they definitely saw him when he was 
making gestures with his hands, when he stood at the podium, when he said what he said at the podium, and none of it was stopped, and he actually made this video and he posted it. But then when he received backlash from social media users, he has deleted the video off his Instagram. But then the video is so circulating because we still cannot understand why he's, he's saying or he did something like that at the Jubilee House. So later in this video, we'll be speaking to Mr. Richard Kumado, who is a fraud and security analyst. But before we get to his part of this video, we are going to look at certain reactions from social media users after this particular particular video was posted. So from Manase Azui, he says that if a Ghanaian journalist is caught filming at the Jubilee House, he will be manhandled and it will be justified by national security protocol. Caleb Kuda was beaten for filming abandoned cars in the national security yard and this is true. But then one thing that people are coming at for this particular tweet is that Caleb Kuda didn't ask permission before he tweet, before he took pictures at the National Security Yard. And then people believe that Caleb Kuda didn't ask permission, but then maybe McMill had asked permission. That is why he was allowed to do what he did. But then if he asked, if he really asked permission, then it also raises a lot of questions because who actually allowed him to do something like that? And then we have a post from the Honorable Sam O. Ablakwa, who is the member of parliament for North Town, and then he said that he also came to say what he wanted. He also came to express his views. And then he feels like everyone who was there at that moment should be resigned. That everyone who was there should be fired or they should resign because it really doesn't speak well of the nation. The Jubilee House is a place where we used to do official events or we, we they used to give us official information. So if now we are also having other people come and perform music videos there, then it's also degrading the place. And then we also have a lot of artists in Ghana who have that potential of taking Ghana outside. You cannot say that it is for beyond the return or it is for us having um, something or maybe it's for putting us out there this is not actually a good way to put us out there. If you wanted to put us out there through music videos, I believe that we have a lot of Ghanaian artists who actually take Ghana outside there. They take Ghana out globally. They sing Ghana music. They promote. Even now, we have a lot of Nigerian artists who are also using Ghanaian names for their music because definitely, since it's Ghanaian, we are also going to have Ghanaian people who are going to follow up, who are going to listen to, and it's definitely going to trend. So if you are going to make a music video at such a place, then what does it speak about the nation, one? What does it speak about the president, two, two? Because if it was after you went there to make your video that you spoke about you being an ex-convict, even that one, we just say, because we have a lot of people in Ghana who are looked down upon because they got out of prison. Yes, we are not going to tag you with that ex-convict name or something, or say that ex-convicts are not supposed to be allowed at such a place. But then for you to go there and then that's, this is now your platform that you are now come to use to express all that you are going to say, all these things, then it also doesn't make it right. After you had said that and you had made your videos, you are taking your picture, which wasn't even a good picture in the first place. That should have been it. So why do you now leave the country and then you post something like this? Me, I'm, I'm wondering, why didn't he post it when he was in Ghana? And he left before. He should have posted it here and see what people would do to him. But then, funny enough, it's not everybody who is seeing something wrong with what McMill has done. Chatawale is actually, I think he, he doesn't see anything wrong with what McMill has done because he also came to post what he what he believes or what he thinks about this particular issue. So Chatawala said that you won't go America, go take pictures for White House. You say you're of return and your own black brother come shoot video as he return home, you bore. You are a villager, trust me. So we'll be speaking with Mr. Richard Kumado, who is a fraud and security consultant about the security aspects of this video and then McMill's picture that he took with the president. So we have Mr. Richard Kumado live on Zoom with us. Hello, Mr. Richard. Yeah, I can hear you. 
Okay, so it's an honor to have you here on Studio 2 TV. So today we are going to be discussing McMill's issue. So from your post, we could see that you were not happy about the turn up of events. And then you stated that it was a standard national sovereignty security protocol if the picture was true. So please, could you elaborate on that for us? No, my name is Richard Kumado. I'm a fraud prevention expert and security intelligence consultant. I have worked with the security service with over 26 years experience. I've consulted for national securities across the group and worked with a number of presidents across the group. I've worked with all our presidents in Ghana. With that regard, you will understand that certain installations and institutions, you are not even allowed to take pictures, let alone the seat of government. And that is where the national sovereignty is. And that is where the highest level of decision making. Now, if they allowed him into those places, which means that he has the raw data with him, and I'm saying that those guys who allow him there without clearance, and even if he do, posting the picture of the presidency out there, uh, is some high level of indiscretion, some levels of uh, bad judgment and ineptitude, and that should not be allowed. Now, when it comes to he touching the president, the question is, who is the host and who is the visitor in this case? Even president versus president, you don't touch them that way. It's against the national security laws of nations, and it's against the standard protocols of nations and bilateral relationships between nations. But then, Mr. Mr. Kumado, we have the Honorable Sam Okuzeto Ablakwa, who is the MP for the North, Tong constituency. And then he also tweeted on this particular issue, but then his was referring to the video that McMill did at the Jubilee House. And then he said that all those responsible for this despicable desecration of the Jubilee House by McMill must be fired immediately. So just as you were saying that being in the same space as the president and doing what we just said, at referring to the picture, do you think it also applies to the same video? I think, is it allowed that we do such things at the Jubilee House? Are there no issues regarding to that? Definitely, there has to be clearance. There have to be standard protocols to be followed. People misconstrued, uh, mis uh, mis uh, they misinform themselves or they misunderstand that when you go to the White House, you can take a picture. There are areas of the White House that don't allow outsiders to come. Not even in terms of videos you do. I've stayed in the UK for many years. You may have a video from America, and once you get to the UK, and it flows on their values and core national security uh, protocols, they will ask you to take certain portions of the videos out, let alone the presidency. If those pictures from the video are true from the presidency, then he has such a formidable act that is equivalent to touching our national sovereignty and it's equivalent to coup d'etat and treason is punishable by death and the people there should not just be allowed but they should be sanctioned and they should be made to face the rigors of the law so that is the highest level of security Mr. Kumado Mr. Kumado yes I can hear you so getting to the last part of what you were saying, there were some network issues, so we're not getting you clearly. No, the point I was making is that taking those videos with the areas he's taking it from, it means that he uh, it has an affront on our national sovereignty and our national security. And he has such areas of national security he shouldn't touch. And it means that it's a coup d'etat, it's a treason. A treason is punishable by, uh, by death. And they should not just be fired, but they should be made to face the rigors of the law. So which areas of national security has he touched that he wasn't supposed to? When you look at where he stood and spoke, and you look at that, you see, when you go to America, the American president cannot speak without a credit. Then he has the audacity and the credible access to where all our national decisions are taken. And he even stood behind where the president would normally say, fellow Ghanaians. And I think the areas we went to using the drone into the uh, freedom and justice umbrella, and I think he has gone a little bit far. And there are many things we didn't see because you see, eh, you may have the video, but if you slow down the video, it means that he has taken many 
actual details from the presidency. And if you are talking about treason, a coup d'etat, and, you know, terrorism that our president is always afraid of, then they have allowed a foreigner who do not have clearance to even get to those places. And he must have the video by showing it publicly on a public platform. I think he has gone a little bit far and the sanctions must be applied. Uh, Mr. Kumado, if I would come in, we had Mr. Kofi Owusun Kuma in cancer, sorry, Mr. Kofi Owusun Cancer, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program. He posted on his Facebook page that the podium that McMill and his team were standing at is not what the president uses to address the nation. He says that all the visitors of the president, all the visitors that the president receives at the hall where the presidency lectern is, get access to it and are allowed to take pictures too, from Ghanaians to foreigners. So it's not as if only international celebrities have access to this lectern. The presidency lectern is one for guests. The president uses the one with the caption president. So we should note the difference. So what do you say about that? I can hear you. Okay, so we lost you at a point after I asked you the question. No, the point I was making is that that is misplace of clarity. That is misinformation and miseducation. The young man who got into the presidency could have taken those videos elsewhere. But to depict something that looks like what the president is using, even if we are to go by his argument, and to have access in the video showing the kind of things the young man displays in his video, I think we have misplaced it, and I think we can do a little bit far better. So how do we prevent such an incident from happening? Going no, number no, one, I think we, a high level of discretion would need to come in place. Number one. Number two, we need to prioritize what we allow and what we do not allow. And number three, let's protect our national sovereignty. If you look at some of the addresses in the president's office, uh, some ways of touching the president is inappropriate. Some areas they have access to is inappropriate. Security protocol at the presidency, we need to take a front line and let the, pres the politicians go backwards. Once we are able to do some of these things, this euphoria and the agitation in the public space is not good for us and we will not be experiencing it in any way. Thank you very much, Mr. Richard Kumado. He is a fraud right. and security consultant and he was just speaking with us on Studio 2 TV. Thank you very much, sir, for having time for us. You're welcome. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Richard Kumado. He is a fraud and security analyst here in Ghana. So this wraps up today's video. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the channel, follow us on all our social media platforms. My name is Babo, and I hope to see you next time. Studios 2 TV. The truth is here in your eyes.